Hello grade 12s. I'm so excited because we finally get to start some really cool AP Maths calculus. So basically what we're doing is um, the first chunk of AP Maths calculus is all about differentiation. Now you'll be pleased to know that very quickly we branch off from normal maths. So you'll notice that under topic one we're going to do derivatives from first principles which yes you do already know and I've just chosen three examples because these are the types of examples they'll ask in an AP Maths exam if they ask it. It just depends. Um, they often run out of marks to test um, first principles, but if they do test it, it is easy marks. Now, they deliberately don't ask anything that they'll normally ask in normal maths, so it's like square roots or one over square roots or interesting things. So, first topic, derivatives from first principles, a little bit boring in that we've seen it before. And then we start the really, really fun stuff from topic four onwards. So that's this first chunk. This first chunk is on differentiation. Then we're going to do a second chunk, which is on graph sketching, really cool graphs, and you know limits and continuity and stuff. So really nice fun. Okay, let's start. Um, first thing is derivatives from first principles. Differentiate the following from first principles. Remember, from first principles means um, the whole f dashed x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h given to you on your formula sheet um, and so you don't have to remember that so here this is a square root it would never be asked in normal maths so it's the limit as h tends to 0 don't forget that f of x plus h just means instead of writing x you write x plus h. I don't really need that bracket, but anyway, minus x plus 2 over h. And the only reason that they don't actually ask this in normal maths is that this requires an understanding of a conjugate. And we don't really do that so much in normal maths. So basically, I'm going to want to, I can't take the limit right now because there's an h in the denominator. So the question is, how do I get rid of these funny thirds? Well, I can multiply by the conjugate. So, so that should be a plus 2. So this is minus root of x plus 2. But if you multiply by that on the top, you need to multiply by this on the bottom. Now, in a moment, you're going to see why the moments at the square root, we decide to multiply by the conjugate. Reason being is if I continue, what happens here is basically I've, this is a dot. You have a minus and oh no, do you see that I shouldn't have written a minus, that was a mistake of mine, when I say conjugate this has to change the sign between them, so that was my mistake, otherwise what what we want to happen is we want to multiply these two together and of course when you square something, because you're basically saying something multiplied by itself, the square root can drop, so you land up getting x plus h plus 2, but then you would multiply those two together and get plus and those two together and get minus the same thing. So hence they land up um, cancelling each other out. And so basically you've made little dots. Then it's minus and it's x plus 2. Now why that's wonderful is that what's going to happen here is all I need is for me to create an h by itself at the top and then it can cancel with the h at the bottom and it doesn't matter what else is left behind. Whatever mess is left behind as long as I can get rid of that h I can take the limit as h tends to 0 without it being undefined. So now I get x plus h plus 2 and minus x minus 2. And what do you know? That entire top is going to cancel except for h, which is perfect for us. Now if it doesn't cancel except for h, we know we've made a mistake. Simply because the whole point of this is for me to cancel out my h's. So I'm going to end up with h over h, and this is very annoying that I have to write this third the whole time, but anyway, x plus h plus 2 plus root of x plus 2, and wonderfully my h's cancel. And the moment my h's cancel, you can find the limit as h tends to 0, because effectively you make h 0. And I get 1 over, and the bottom is root x plus h plus 2, notice it hadn't gone far enough, plus root x plus 2. Uh, now I'm being silly there because I shouldn't have written h. The whole point is I was finding the limit as h tends to 0 and so I was ignoring that h and so there we go.
Um, basically, those two like terms at the bottom are exactly the same thing. So if they're two exactly the same thirds, I have two of these root x plus, oh gosh, I don't know, sorry about that, x plus 2. Now, at this time, you might look at this and be like, wow, how did I start at the top? with this root x plus 2 at the top, and now I have root x plus 2 at the bottom and a 2. Now, once we've done the next couple of differentiation rules, you are going to be allowed to check this. You, you're going to be able to check this using the rules. At the moment, we can't check this because we only have our normal maths rule. So very soon we'll be able to check if that's right or not. Right, so soldiering on to the next type of example, this I, I probably could ask a similar something like this in normal maths, simply because this is some form of hyperbola, but it is a very weird looking hyperbola, and so I probably wouldn't. So we start again. Now I don't actually have to write down the whole formula. You are welcome to jump straight into the substitution phase. So f of x plus h would be negative 4 over 2 x plus h plus 3 minus negative 4 over 2x plus 3. Now this isn't a third one, so I'm not going to have to worry about multiplying by the conjugate or anything, but it is it is going to have two denominators, and the moment I have two denominators, I think I want to find an LCD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to LCD this, and I'm just going to say divided by h at the end. So this LCD is going to be, oh, I think I'm going to use a square bracket, so it's 2x plus h, I'm not multiplying out just because ultimately I know I'm going to take h equal to 0, um, and so that would be annoying, and then 2x plus 3, so basically my two denominators together. So this numerator will need a 2x plus 3 to make it have the LCD, and this is now a plus 4, and this is 2x plus h plus 3. Right, so it's not difficult, it's just quite long and messy. So I'm still taking the, the, um, the limit as h tends to 0. Now I'm pretty much hoping that the top's going to land up at an h somewhere. Reason being is that if I tip in times by this h, it's 1 over h. If I can cancel that h with something at the top, then life is very good. So I'm going to multiply the thing out at the top. So this is minus 8x minus 12. Now I'm going to be a little bit sneaky here and do two steps in one. So this is 2x but times 4. So that's plus 8x. That looks very promising because I can see my x's will cancel. Then that's 2h times 2 is 8h. And then 4 times 3 is 12. Now that's looking very promising because I can immediately see that my x's and my constants are all going to simplify away, which is exactly what I want. I want to be left with an h so it can cancel. So moving on, limit is h tends to 0. And the x's and the constant cancel, so I get 8h, which is perfect. My LCD. And finally, my times by 1 over h, and now my h's can cancel. And the moment my h's can cancel, I can now find the limit as h tends to 0, because I can basically effectively make it 0. So I can drop this limit, and effectively I make that 0, so I get 8 over, and this bracket is 2x plus 3, and this bracket is also 2x plus 3. So I actually land up getting 8 over 2x plus 3 squared. Now again, you might scroll up here and think, how does negative 4 over 2x plus 3 you know, um, differentiate to this? And once we've done our very next um, well, not very next, but one of the one of the rules we're going to do next, we can check that this actually is a derivative, and so you can always know if you're right or wrong in an exam. Right, so so far we've done one with a square root, where we had to multiply by the conjugate, then we did one where we had a denominator, so we had to LCD, so why not combine the two? How exciting! So let's start again. So g dash x this time, not f dash x, is equal to the limit now this is probably going to get long and messy. Right, all over h, so it's 1 over the square root of 3, x plus h plus 1, minus 1 over 
the square root of 3x plus 1 over 8. So very similar to what we've done before, I see that there's two fractions and so I'm going to LCD it. I'm also going to go divide by h which will become times 1 over h in a moment. So this LCD is the root of 3x plus h plus 1 times by the root of 3x plus 1. So this is actually the root of 3x plus 1 minus the root of 3x plus h plus 1. So now what we've done is done the LCD that we did in example B. Unfortunately, it's left us with the situation that we had in example A, where we have, ultimately, we want this h over here, which is in a moment going to be times 1 over h, we want to get rid of it. But everything at the top is um, kind of involved in a root, and so we can't get at it. And the only reason, the only way to get rid of those roots is to multiply by my conjugate. So this is going to get very messy. So the limit is h tends to 0 of the root of 3x plus 1 minus the root of, now I might just write 3x plus 3h plus 1, just because I'm tired of writing brackets, all over, this is the root of 3x plus 3h plus 1 times, I suppose I don't need that bracket, 3x plus 1. Now I've got this times by 1 over h, that's still there from here, but what I'm going to do now is multiply by my conjugate. So I'm going to multiply by the root of 3x plus 1 plus the root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. And at the bottom, the root of 3x plus 1 plus, now don't forget you're always multiplying by the same thing on the top and the bottom because then you're effectively multiplying by 1, so you're actually doing nothing. Right. Now, I definitely would not multiply out the bottom because that would just be a mess. Uh, yeah, I suppose you could. But ultimately, I'm going to make h equal to 0 in the long run, and then I can possibly do some multiplying out at the bottom. So actually, all I'm going to do now at the top is multiply out my top. Now, I deliberately did this at the top so that I would have created a dot. So I get the root times the root, which just lands up with what's under the root, so 3x plus 1. Then that would be plus the two roots minus the two roots, and so I get minus 3x plus 3h plus 1. And unfortunately, it's all over this massive mess. So it's all over, wow, it gets very tiring to write. 3x plus 3h plus 1 times the root of 3x plus 1 times root of 3x plus 1 plus root of 3x plus 3h plus 1, definitely not worth multiplying out, and times this 1 over h. Now wonderfully, you'll know that you're right, because look at the top. The top is basically going to simplify down to 3h, because 3x minus 3x is going to disappear. 1 take away 1 will disappear, and minus, it's actually a plus, I think, I think I made a typo here, because this is a plus, so it actually is going to become minus 3h all over this denominator times 1 over h, which is exactly what I want, because I wanted my h's to be able to disappear, so that I can just find the limit by making h0. So, for the last time, let's write this whole horrible denominator, plus 3h plus 1 times the root of 3x plus 1 times root 3x plus 1 plus the root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. And so now, don't forget that at the moment the h has disappeared on its own, you can find the limit because you can make h 0 and it doesn't matter because the denominator is not 0. So that's going to disappear and that's going to disappear. So now I've taken the limit, so it's negative 3, no more limit, over, and this is going to be root 3x plus 1 times root 3x plus 1. Now I'm going to be able to simplify that, and this is going to be root 3x plus 1 plus root 3x plus 1. So a lot of simplifying to be done here. So this is negative 3, the root times the root will just land me up with what's under the root, so 3x plus 1. And this is a root plus a root, so this is 2 root 3x plus 1. 
Now, can this go a little bit, you know, more simplified? And it actually can, because if I put the 2 out first, this is 3x plus 1. Technically, this is 3x plus 1 as well, but to the power of a half, because it's square rooted. Now, when you multiply powers the same base, you add exponents. So this actually becomes 3x plus 1, multiply powers the same base, add exponents, and I get 3 over 2. Now, would you be expected to go to that type of level of simplification? Well, I would, simply because once we've done the rules for differentiation, you're going to be able to check that that is the right answer. So you're going to be able to know that it gets simplified as much as that. Once we do the next rules, we're going to discuss, okay, so how simplified must we get? Because you can go crazy in some of the next ones. And the answer is going to be we never actually go too crazy. We simplify what we can, we make things neat if we can, and then we stop. Now here, that's definitely a good neatness to get to because these did have the same base. So just to show you what I did, I moved the 2 to the front and then I basically wrote this thinking of this 3x plus 1 as a base. So when I multiply powers the same base I could add those exponents. So yeah, that looks very interesting and very soon we'll be able to do that in one move as opposed to a whole long first principles. So if I scroll back up to the question, it is a little bit weird that this question of 1 over root 3x plus 1 lands up with such a funny looking derivative. But we'll understand that pretty soon. Right, so that's the end of first principles. I specifically only chose those three examples because that's the only type of three examples they'll ask you in an AP math setting. Um, obviously, these are much more difficult than maths, as you've seen. So I'm not going to practice any of these at this stage. Uh, once we've finished all our... Um, differentiation rules. I've got a mixed exercise and I'll throw in one or two um, first principles then. Okay, first one done.